out to his father, to the reapers. And he said unto his father, My head, my head. And he said to the lad, Carry him to his mother. And when he had him and brought him to his mother, he sat on her knees till noon and then died. And she went up and laid him on the bed of the man of God and shut the door upon him and went out. And she called unto her husband and said, Send me, I pray thee, one of the young men and one of the asses that I may run to the man of God and come again. And he said, Wherefore will thou go to her today? It is neither new moon nor Sabbath. And she said, It shall be well. Then she sat on an ass and said to her servant, Drive and go forward. Slack not thy riding or me, except I bid thee. And I'll be reading your hymn, Romans the 8th chapter, the 38th and the 39th verse. And it says, For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, my God, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus. Now, if you don't mind on today, y'all pray for me. Amen. Uh, on today, I would like to declare my topic from that 24th verse in the book of Kings. And it basically just says, Hallelujah. Then, shall, then she saddled an ass and said to her servant, Drive and go forward. Slack not thy riding for me, except I be Hallelujah. I do acknowledge your theme on tonight. Women destined with determination to drive. Tonight, if y'all don't mind, I thank you for the for the liberty. Amen. Can you turn and tell your neighbor, neighbor? Neighbor. You gotta tell them like y'all really mean it. Tell them neighbor. neighbor. Uh -huh. Come on, tell them again. Say neighbor. Wake them up, y'all. Come on, tell him, don't let it distract you. Come on, turn and tell somebody else, just don't let it bother you. You may take your seats in the presence of the Lord. Don't let it distract you. We understand the distractions are some things, and I'm using my own uh, definitions, it's something to take your mind away from your task or your assignment. Uh -huh. Distractions come to help you to get your mind off of what God has really purposed in your life. Uh, distractions come at times to make you uh, feel like you really uh, are worthless and have no hope. Sometimes distractions come just to get your attention off because the enemy knows that he allow you to go forth with drive and to do what you got to do that you're going to be something wonderful in the kingdom of God. I uh, don't think that the enemy don't realize that you are a threat to society. So what he does is he keep reminding us of things in our past that we have gone through and have been delivered from. Uh, there are things that we call, and I'm going to use, I use the word it. You can put whatever your it is, but I got some it's in my life that have distracted me from moving forward in God. I got some things in my life that uh, I had to, I turned back to because they became a big distraction. You know when we going through our walk with the Lord and things come up and sometimes, and I always use this for an example, we don't really care if our neighbors speak or if our neighbors don't speak. You know, but if something happened in our immediate family or in the church that folks not talking to you, it becomes a distraction. Yeah, you know, there's some things that really 
bother you. There's some things that get down into your spirit that move you and it becomes a distraction. And so tonight we're learning that don't let it distract you. In our walk again with God, it's the enemy job to keep us from moving forward. If he had his way, none of us would do anything for the work of ministry. Y'all know what I'm talking about. We can act like we don't know, but y'all know on weeknight services, it looks like everything that could happen does happen. You, you free all week long, but look like Wednesday night, everything in the world falls apart and it becomes a distraction. And you can't seem to find any, you know, that drive to get to church sometime. And I'm finding out that some of us give in to our distractions. You know, there's some things we need to just ignore and go on. What you're talking about, first lady, when the cat runs away, that's all right. You still need to go to church. Uh-huh. Because you can always adopt another cat later. Uh-huh. You know, when, you know, somebody don't come home from work and you already talk to them on the phone. Ain't no need for you stay at home waiting for them to get there. We just use some of these distractions just for, you know, just for an excuse. But I'm so glad that when my distractions come, I'm learning to say, now, Lord, is this distraction to keep me from moving forward or is it really something I need to stop and pay attention to? Uh-huh, because that's what the enemy will do sometimes to us. You know, we got to learn to weigh our distractions. We have some good distractions. Uh-huh. Can I just say it tonight? We got some good distractions. Pastor West walked in. I lost everything. I forgot. I wasn't even thinking straight. That's a good distraction. Uh-huh. I was trying to remember where I was. So y'all know I got lost. Don't act like y'all didn't see it. Uh-huh. And so, I saw him walk in. I wasn't for sure. And all I just lost everything. All everything just left. There are some good distractions. But there are some distractions we have no business paying attention to. Uh-huh. There are some distractions that know it's the enemy he's bringing our past back up before us and he's trying to distract us from moving forward so you know what happened is when the enemy feels like you know because he can only feel it and you know that he feels like you're moving forward and you're becoming a threat to him he'll bring your past back up yeah he'll bring your boo back in your life again y'all know y'all left him alone long time ago and here he come look like you done ran into him at the mall and now you he said well i just looking for a friend i just want somebody to talk to and you find yourself talking to the friend that the lord then took away from you that is a distraction and then he'll tell you i just want somebody to pray with me you know because they cause don't think the devil don't have a way of setting it up uh-huh i'm talking to somebody in here tonight uh-huh and you know he'll make them look so good he'll make them you know give you that googly eye look and when you see him you just melt all down and you know when you go home because you miss bible remember so you know that was your weeknight boost so by the time you get home on friday night from being with little boo that you ran from uh-huh now he's saying well will you pray for me and you don't even know how to pray no more because you're so happy that booty came back into your life there are some distractions that we need to ignore and to move on and, and like i said there's some good distractions there's some distractions that we pay attention to like when we feel But that's a good distraction Because that's a distraction that you need to run to God's house And get under the word So there are some things That we need to pay attention to Now there's some distractions I'm going to just use a few There are people distractions I just talked about the brother that came back There's some things distractions Uh huh We get distracted by somebody's house being bigger than ours We get distracted by somebody's car being better than ours we get distracted by somebody's marriage looking so wonderful on the other side. We get distracted by things that really don't have no meaning to them as so you think. We get distracted by uh, when it looks like, you know, we're going through all hell and high water and everybody in the church coming in, they got a praise to the Lord and you sitting there, you know, you said, don't want to tell your testimony. And that becomes a distraction. And guess what? You are a distraction to yourself. Why are you a distraction to yourself? Because you allow the enemy to bring back up things that don't have no worth to them and it distracts you and keep you from moving forward. I'm going somewhere tonight, y'all. Help me just build my case. Uh-huh. So there's some things that we, you know, we left in the past when the Lord saved us and he saved us and he, you know, we got so happy that we were saved and we gave our life to the Lord and don't think you're just going to get by easy. You got to prove yourself sometime and what God will do is he'll allow things to come back up in your life and he will allow things to come back up but it will distract you if you don't do something about what the Lord has done and what you said you was delivered from. Amen? Uh-huh. And so it becomes a distraction. So now I'm going to the, to the scripture about the Shudamite woman. Uh, this woman took care of 
God. You know, sometimes if we just take care of the men of God, it will be well with our souls. Uh huh. But don't nobody want to take care of nobody no more. They feel like I'm going through all this. I can't, you know, be grabbing pastor's backpack and I can't grab pastor's briefcase and I can't do all this. But I promise you, when you take care of the man of God, God will take care of you. This Shudamite woman, I looked at her and I said, God, I don't know what I would do if it's something that was distracting me before. It does not say in the scripture. I'm just thinking it's on my own. That this woman had no children. I, and maybe she became distracted and ate the baby powder and, you know, she smelled the baby lotion and, you know, she, but it didn't say that she was any way dis disheartened about not having a child. But she had a child and then I found it phenomenal that she didn't even ask for the child herself. Somebody else spoke good and you wanted that for her. Can anybody speak good and want something good for you? Oh, or are we distracted because we don't want nobody to have better than what we have? Oh, yeah. uh, is it that we don't want nobody to get more than what we're getting? But the Jehazi, he spoke better. He said, I want to, you know, I think she wants a child. He didn't say thank you. He said, she didn't have a child and she's childless and I probably would have said if it was today, I would have been like, hold up, brother. Don't, please don't put no children on me right now. You don't know that this breed of kids out here today, uh, they just got something else going on. I don't know really where, where they come from, a new nest of people. Amen. But anyway, uh-huh. So, uh, he said, I want, she doesn't have a child. And this prophet said, uh-huh, you will have a child by this time in the next season. And I can only imagine, don't play with me. This may be something at this point now I understood it was something that she really wanted. Because she said, don't play with me. Don't lie to me. If, if you want to do it, uh, do it. But please don't, don't lie to me about this thing. Are you serious? You know, my husband is old and this, that, and the third. She he said, uh, she said, but just don't, don't, don't play with me. And then as the scripture go on, she bears the son. And when she bears the son, and later on it doesn't say even how old, but it says as the child grew, that this child fell sick, and this child dies. Can you imagine God giving you something that you want, and then it dies on you, or you lose it, and God takes it away? You think God is taking it away? Can you only imagine how this woman felt? Can you imagine how her spirit may have felt? But I'm so glad to know that this shooter might woman had enough in her. Uh, and I, let me go back one point. And then I got so tickled because the daddy, he didn't, uh, sorry man, he didn't say, Grim, here, let me lay hands on him. He said, take him to his mama. Can I just throw a pin right here? My kids are daddy's girls. Love daddy to pieces. But when they get sick, go talk to your mama. Go to your mama. And I'm sitting up here saying, but this is the man of God. You sending them to me? So it kind of, you know, did something to me. And what I, what I came up with is this mother must have been a strong woman. That even the husband knew if I could just get my sick baby to the mama. And that mama, you know, because we know better, y'all. We know to give them Tylenol and not soda and Skittles when they're not feeling well. Uh-huh. We know to give them something when they're not feeling well that, you know, will help them. And I, I you know, I, I was going to say it. My husband said Chris was sick and I took her home and, baby, I don't know what to do. I said, well, do what you think to do. I mean, I'm at work. I'm trying to process it. He said, but she's really sick. And I, I came home. I said, well, Chris, did daddy get you some medicine? I don't remember. Uh, did daddy pray for you? Yeah, he prayed. Okay, well, did he give you something for the fever? No, we had Skittles. We had Pepsi. He gave me something to drink or juice or something. Well, did he feed you? Yeah, we had some fast food. And I began to wonder, what was y'all doing while this child was home with this fever? But it was okay because I understand that there are some things that just mama knows what to do. Uh-huh, it's not a bad thing that daddy didn't know what to do, but some things only mama know what to do. But going back to the scripture, I had to just drop that one out there. I still could not believe she had Skittles and a Pepsi and uh -huh, she had a fever. I couldn't understand that one. But anyway, so going back to the scripture, this woman's uh, after when they brought her her son, can you imagine somebody bringing you their, your son and your son is sick and when you're holding your child and you have your child in your arms and now at this point, this child
child dies and this child is dead and you sitting there I never saw in the scripture and the scripture is very plain I never saw when this woman panicked and did not know what to do one thing I'm happy about is that she loved God so much she didn't call for the doctor she didn't call for the physicians she didn't call for her mama she wasn't worried at this point about her husband she said take my baby and lay him up on the bed now we go back to she prepared a place for the pastors to lay down and she said take my baby to we I know that the man of God prayed and the man of God laid and, and then as she laid him there good God almighty uh -huh, when she laid him on the bed now can you imagine leaving your baby on the bed and you know your baby is dead uh, that let me know this was a powerful woman of God because she knew it was going to be well with her soul and she did not become distracted because her son was not breathing no more. She said if I can just get to the man of God it will be well with my soul. Sometimes some things in our life lay dead and we just gotta sometimes let it die and get to the house of God. And when we get to God's house, huh? good God Almighty, what God will have for us here? We can go back home and raise the dead. I'm not talking about people. Oh, no. 